a lower ability year four numeracy class and one consisting mainly of boys. This lesson will present another learning challenge for Kane. Kane suffers with asthma and is often away from school. With individual behaviour and learning plans, Kane receives a lot of attention in the classroom from his teacher, Harriet Perry, and teaching assistants, Julie Hodson and Norma Wiper. We'll watch Kane closely to see how he constructs his own learning throughout the lesson. And we'll see how far his agenda coincides with his teachers. Five. Well done. It's a lesson about 2D and 3D shapes and begins with a mental maths warm-up. If you get it right, you get one point, they get it wrong. Focus is a real issue within the classroom. They're the lower ability group. But there's not much in between them. There's not much between their levels. It's more to do with their behaviour issues and needs. Oh, you're doing well. Kane. He doesn't see the point. If you spoke to him, he'd say, well, what's the point of me doing it? He doesn't quite understand how it's going to help him develop or how it's going to make his life better. So he's not interested in doing it. Good, chair, man. Good boy, thank you. Today, we are learning to visualise 3D objects. Kane really struggles with literacy, which might explain his initial lack of interest. So this is a... And his readiness to be distracted by his face-pulling friends. The learning objective is taken straight from the numeracy strategy, to visualise 3D objects from 2D drawings. So how well will Kane meet this objective? OK, I'm going to hand out some pens. It's a whiteboard between two. I want you to work in partners. Kane, can you hand out the pens, darling? One between two, please. Go around with them. The children are working in pairs at their tables. This calls for a lot of cooperation, a bit of a challenge for Kane. People are waiting. Take one pen and then walk round. See the Empire State Building on the board and the Eiffel Tower and the pyramids? Chris what? Look at the board. Can you see how the pyramids look flat? But in actual fact, if you saw a pyramid, it would be in 3D. The children have been asked to draw the Empire State Building in three dimensions. This has fired Kane's imagination and he's taken control of the drawing, leaving Hafiz to become a spectator. Can I move around here so Hafiz can have a look as well? What Instead we of the Empire State Building, it seems that Kane is actually copying the drawing of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Realising that he's been drawing the wrong building, Kane starts again. Did you not like that one, Kane? Oh. You haven't got much longer now, Hafiz. Are you thinking how it should go? Okay, I want you to put your lids on your pens. Stop what you're doing. And me ready to hold them up to show me. Let's see who's that ready. Well done, that table. Fantastic, apart from Cameron. Put your hand up if you found it a bit tricky. Everybody just hold theirs up so I can have a quick look at them then. Well done. Right, put them back down. Who would like to come up and explain how they did theirs to the class? Some of the children have managed to draw some 3D pictures, but Kane is focused on completing his sketch. Your job today is to draw me a diagram a 2D diagram using polygons. We'll finish this in a minute. We won't rub it off. Put the lid on the pen. Kane isn't listening to the learning objective. Put the lid on the pen now and you can finish it off. Because you need to look at this. This is your work you're doing today. Julie negotiates to remove his sketch. We'll put this safe. Shall I put it safe over there? Or safe in the middle of the table. Hafiz? Three or more sides. What he appears to be drawing is the side of the Empire State Building. Uh, flat shape. Flat shape. OK, you now lid on the paint. That's quite enough now. Kane, why have I used stars as his eyes and not circles? Why wouldn't I be allowed to use circles for his eyes? Because circles uh, haven't got no corners. 
So what does that mean? Circles aren't a what? Good boy. What aren't... 2D, 2D shapes. Circles are 2D, but what aren't they? They aren't a... Polygon. Polygon, good boy, because polygons have more than three sides. Despite his apparent lack of engagement, Kane has understood that a circle isn't a polygon. But, contribution over, he's now back to his drawing. a 2D picture out of polygons that you're going to be able to make. The children have been asked to do drawings made up of polygons. How many sides? Well, a hexagon. Right down then, it's a hexagon. Kane is drawing a picture of an animal. Can you pass me an orange for a minute? It hasn't got to be colourful, Kane. Very good, well done. And what's this here? Is this his tail? Yeah. And what shape is it? A triangle. A triangle. Can you write it down? Can you tell me it's a triangle? You could just put a T, couldn't you, if we're not sure on the spellings? I'm not very good at spelling, I always forget. Do you want to put a T? So you know it's a triangle, well done. And what shape is this? A rectangle. A rectangle, brilliant. So could you do a... Do you write a rectangle? Here? You're naming the triangles first. The next task is to construct 3D models from these 2D drawings using nets. You can't just go off and do your own. You're learning to work together as well. Kane once again takes charge. Can you see what's got at you? That's for the body. Kane, yours has got a long rectangular face, so yeah. do you think you need one with a rectangular face? These have got square faces. He attempts to identify the flat net shape he needs, but loses interest when he picks the wrong one. It's safer to return to drawing. Which, which for which part? For the head. As he continues with his drawing, he makes his irritation felt by deliberately excluding his work partner. What shape is this? A fruit. Oh, fantastic. Look at that, then you're enough to save. Brilliant, well done. Kane decides to return to the task in hand. What's it going to make when we cut it out and stick it together, do you know? Square. What a square, that's a 2D shape. What 3D shape will it make? A cube. A cube. Good boy. Cut it out then and we'll see. Having applied himself, he has no trouble cutting out his net shapes accurately. Careful cutting. Good boy. Gluing 3D shapes together is a tricky and sticky business. Kane has accidentally ripped his net and he's not happy. What's broke? It doesn't matter which way you do it. Hold it there, that's it, now do it. Good boy, lovely. But it needs to go along them lines. Use the glue. There you go, now leave it to dry. Julie skillfully gets him back from his sad seat, but he's still making his feelings felt by his negative body language. And put some more glue on the other side. Kane is using small cut-out shapes to faithfully reproduce his drawing. Fueled by being the focus of his teacher's attention, Kane seems very motivated. The rest of the class have all done well constructing their models too. Well, what do you think you could use it for? Suddenly, Kane is struggling again. He can't find any suitable polygons to make good legs for his cat.
He knows that he needs polygons, but none of the nets provide him with the right 3D shape. What shape do you think we need? You've got to think of what shape you need, what 3D shape you need. He's frustrated and unable or unwilling to ask for help. But Kane doesn't give up, deciding instead to cut some 2D shapes to make the legs. Put one on there. Just a, just a little one. The lesson ends with feedback. How easy did the children find the task? And what about Kane? Put your hand up if you found the task green. You thought, yep, you did really well and it was really easy. Put your hand up if you think you're green. OK, what about orange? Thought it was OK, but you'd like a bit more work on it. You need a bit of help. Brilliant. What about red? You thought, oh, I just couldn't do it and I need loads more help, miss, please. Well done, thank you. Great for being honest, well done. OK, you two, do you want to tell us about yours? Let's have a look at your diagram, your 2D one. Brilliant. We've done rectangle for the body, we've done rectangle legs, we've done a triangle tail, and then we've done a square head, and then we've done star eyes. Yeah. And, and you, 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 you labelled them as well, didn't you, for me? You've written a T for... Triangle. And an R, a ruffle... Rectangle. Brilliant. And now can you show us your 3D model? Let's have a look at the three. What does it become? We used a triangle for the head. Uh -oh. No, we used a square for the head. Oh, is it a square? Key Remember for the, the head. Because it's 3D. A triangle for ears. And a, a big rectangle for the oh. body. Is rectangle 2D or 3D? 3D. Rectangles are 2D shape. What would it be called? Cuboid, fantastic. Cuboid. I used a cuboid and then I used a tail. A, uh, a flat, um, a flat tail. Oh, that's a good idea. You did a flat tail, fantastic. I thought he worked well during the lesson. I was quite surprised at how well he managed to make his 3D object from his 2D drawing. I thought. Yeah, that was great. He did, yeah. He had one moment where it wasn't going quite right, it wasn't sticking together. He handled it quite well. He won't always handle it like that. There wasn't the shapes there for him to actually do 3D legs. Um, that was either going to be too big or not the right shape. So he just went back to 2D shapes and did a 2D rectangle, which is what was on his first picture, his 2D picture anyway. That's fantastic, because he actually used his initiative. A few of the children came up to me and were like, I can't make this shape, what do I do? Whereas he actually just went and yeah, just got a piece of paper and cut it out, and he, he did it without being told to.